You are looking at personal storage with built-in factory. And this factory is composed entirely from collection of blueprint modules. And today in this video, I would share tips and tricks, schematics with logic behind, and the blueprints itself for this satisfactory mega project. Centralized personal storage, also known as the shop or supermarket, is one of those satisfactory projects that is mostly desirable once you reach the mid-game. After all, running around individual factories to pick up materials gets old very fast. While there are numerous ways of how one can make centralized storage, just having two opposing rows of containers with connected factory is one of classical satisfactory choices. And thanks to power of blueprints in Satisfactory Update 8, one even can try making small storage factories contained in a single 4x4. These were one of the dozens blueprints I made previously on this channel, and they serve their function. You can even group them up into alleyways and imitate classical centralized storage. For for example, I have done versions for iron, steel, electronics, weapons, package fuel and even bio waste. But there are limitations of 4x4 with the low production ratios. And once you try to implement big ticket items like heavy modular frames, motors or computers, you start to lose density. A bit counterproductive. After all, centralized storage is all about density and the time savings. So Reddit user Extra Nice Photos was inspired by my creations on this channel. But in turn, I was inspired by creation of Extra Nice Photos in this Reddit thread. The idea is very simple. Just tuck personal storage factory vertically, have containers down below and sprinkle some crafting stations. I just want to push this idea even further by simply stacking multiple factories horizontally in modular fashion. There are a total of something about 36 production items that I want to have in my centralized storage by the end of the game. Also, there are more than a dozen of extra items like power shards, package fuel, gas filters, weapon ammo and nobilisk. Then add to that incineration bin, sorting containers and crafting stations. With 12 containers as the baseline, it is at least 5 or maybe even 6 horizontal sections with various amount of vertical stacks. So this is quite the mega project to tackle. And today I will explain first two sections, one for bio waste processing and one for iron and steel items. As usual, I share my blueprints for free in the pinned comment down below. If you want to support continuation of this video in the future, you can always use YouTube super stickers and there are always YouTube engagement things, well you know the drill. So without further ado, let's explore the first section. Right, as you enter into your bio-waste processor, you have several things. First of all, we have our utility storage containers, which is well incinerator, protection bin and bio-waste processor. Uh, then you have several crossing stations, some personal storage space over here. You have your fixed shop and obviously you have entrance into apartments. More about that a bit later. Right now I'm more interested in the storage itself, so the first section is over here, it ends over there and we have total of 6 containers, power shards, color cartridges, fabric, alien protein, packaged liquid biofuel and solid biofuel. And it looks simple, but actually it is not. There's a lot of hidden things over here, a lot of hidden functionality that I want to explain. The idea is pretty simple, but before you actually get to this idea, it's kind of convoluted. So let's go for the dissection of the blueprint. This biowise processor takes up only two 4x4s. Floor number one have our storage containers. Uh, they are, by the way, accessible from the both sides and I have some markings over here so you can understand that even without accessing the storage container itself we have well bios processor over here this is really important this is most important container everything starts over here you just dump your bio waste over here and after that these things start to work. You can treat the whole system as the huge sushi belt where we have the smart splitters and one lane and from this lane the several items are being separated by the smart splitters. So over here we have our first smart splitter after the well bio waste processor container. This basically separates our purple power slugs and have the overflow settings. Over here we have our purple slugs, then we have our yellow slugs, then we have our blue slugs and once again we have our smart splitters that are well just 
just separate things from the main chain. For example, over here I have leaves, overflow and yellow slugs. So the leaves is really important. Leaves are one of those things that you can input like maybe 10, 20 stacks of leaves into your container. And the thing with the constructors, well, they can hold only one stack of certain item. So if you input like 20 stacks of leaves, well, with overflow settings, the thing will just flush out of the system or go into the dead end. This is not ideal, how we can actually circumvent that. This is more simpler than you think, we just need to make a buffer. So before our constructor, for example, over here we have well color cutters and flower petals. If you have several stacks of the flower petals, well, instead overflowing over here, for example, with this smart splitter, well, they will go into the buffer, which is another storage container. So we basically can have the buffer, the size of the, well, biowaste processor, the size of the industrial storage container. Nothing actually will overflow for, well, the key items. Only place where I do not have my buffers are the slugs and, well, different sorts of the alien proteins. Everything else, well, everything just have the buffers. Next part is how to handle the connections in between the blueprints in the vertical stack. And it's way easier than it sounds. Uh, actually, over here we have this huge indentation, this, well, red thingy thingy. And we have multiple conveyor lift holes. And basically what you take, you just put your conveyor lift into the bottom part, because, well, bottom part have relative connection there. And you just connect it to the top part. That's it. The same goes for all the conveyor holes for the liquids as well. And the same goes for the electricity. With the electricity, basically you just extend the power line and we have connection of the two blueprints in our power chain. The whole reason for those indentations over there, like over there, this gap is also one of the connection points. So yeah, those indentations, those gaps, they serve actual function. So what is being converted into what? Well, it's quite simple. In general, there are, well, slugs, three constructors for slugs being converted into power shards. There is one constructor that is converting alien protein into alien DNA. Then we have the constructor for flower petals for the leaves being converted into biomass. Same goes for the wood being converted into biomass as well. Then after that, this biomass from the wood is being converted into solid biofuel. The leaf biomass actually goes up into this blueprint and then it will be combined over there in the assemblers with the mycelia to be converted into the fabric. Over here we are handling our liquid biofuel. Here we have the water connections. This is the only connection that you will ever need for this blueprint and it is only required if you want to make the package liquid biofuel. After that we have the final level with all the constructors related to alien protein. And after that we have the final bit where we have the final smart splitter in the chain that also have the overflow settings. These conveyor lifts will go all the way down into our protection bin. And this is mean any item that will be input into the system that is non-native, basically it will end up in this protection bin. Also there is the fixed incinerator and this is the separate line. Basically this container is being connected to the awesome sink. Nothing special there. But the special thing will be started with this particular constructor that is converting the air alien protein. And the thing is, I do not produce the alien protein by default. You can only produce alien protein in this blueprint if you just go to this container, if you take your alien protein from this container and you input it into the biowaste processor. This way it will be converted into alien DNA and it will automatically sink into the awesome sink. Pretty simple, but well, you need to make some, well, half manual labor over here. Another advanced feature of this blueprint is packaged liquid biofuel production. This production line will not work by the default. To produce packaged liquid biofuel, you need to actually do some manual things. And those manual things are basically taking your solid biofuel or maybe biomass if you have any at hand, also combining that with, well, some empty canisters and placing them into biowaste processor. This way, those empty canisters, they will go into separate buffer for, well, liquid biofuel and, well, solid biofuel will be converted into liquid biofuel. The same goes for the biomass. Biomass first will be converted into the solid biofuel and then this solid biofuel over there will be converted into liquid biofuel. Why I'm not producing the empty canisters over here? Well, it's quite simple. It is extra connection, extra resources, and I will have the empty canisters next door in the next blueprint with the steel canisters, so it doesn't really make sense. And also, well, this is the advanced feature. I don't really need this by default, so there's that. 
Also, I do include the instructions in the blueprint itself, so you can kind of understand the capacity and, well, the function of this blueprint and all the advanced features. The fifth one, yeah, this is really straightforward. To some extent, if you think about this, well, it should be just straightforward. You know, like incinerator will just destroy things, protection bin will protect, well, the processor in itself, and, well, the processor will just process the things that will input into the processor. Quite simple. So there's that, and there is the apartments. The apartments is pretty much two blank blueprints. Uh, one of them is being filled by some, well, interior design that I usually prefer. There are some sort of like fireplace on every single floor, so some rooms can be used to, well, to some functional extent, for example, for extra storage or MAM or, or crafting stations, or you can actually use it to, well, along the lines of, well, factory charts, for example, you can chart your factory on this huge wall over here and have some sort of idea of your general layout. One year later, when you will pick up your safe, well, you will know where everything stands. Uh, also, there is a ladder over here that leads to the second floor, extra rooms, one room over here, lobby area over there, extra room over here, and then we have the connection to the fourth blueprint over here. This is some sort of like open lobby area, so this is the level number three, uh, this is the level number Number four, you can just place your like human railgun and just go all the way where you want, you know. <laughs> so this will work. And obviously over here I have just a bunch of blank space. So this is a huge hall with the windows. You can convert it into anything that you actually prefer, to be honest. And, and there is the next level. And this area is inner garden. Uh, this place actually have enough space for the hub. So yeah, there is the function to that as well. Or maybe you can just place the drone port for some bizarre reason. I don't know. So these are the apartments, bunch of blank space that you can decorate to your own personal taste or maybe have some secondary function over there. But personally, I just use them for the looks. <laughs> BioWay's processor was quite simple, but well, still an iron is pretty simple as well, it doesn't have any like convoluted logic, but it is just bigger factory and straight over the gate you can see that there is a total of four levels, there are a total of four modules, this is four blueprint stacks, so blueprint number one, two, three and four over there, and we are starting from the containers on the bottom most level, there are a total of 12 containers with well all your favorite items like concrete for example, and obviously empty canisters. Then we have our smelters, smelters which are well foundries, we have constructors, 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 assemblers, constructors, constructors, assemblers, assemblers and manufacturer. So the final manufacturer is heavy modular frames, which is the pinnacle of production. So let's go level by level and just explain everything from the first level over here. And after I will explain everything in the game itself, I will go for the schematics, because well, at this density, at this scale, I think the schematics is way more convenient to understand, but well, some visual aids, especially in third dimension, it's kinda useful, you know? Straight out of the gate we have foundries to produce iron ingots, and this level in particular will serve uh, the function of supplying our solid steel ingot foundries over here, there and over there. Also I'm using iron alloy ingot. Why I'm using that? Well, it's quite simple, because if I'll use standard recipe, well I will need to have more space and I will need to use more power shards if I want to overclock things and also I will need to have several input belts of iron ore, which I'm not a fan of. This is the first level of foundries. The second level of foundries actually will supply way up there all the iron production with the constructor and the assemblers. Second level is pretty much everything about steel items, so over here I will produce my steel pipes, steel beams, uh, steel screws, and I will produce my solid steel ingots, obviously. Uh, so there are three levels of foundries and three levels of constructors, so over here steel pipes, uh, over there the steel pipes once again. On the second level I already have the empty canisters over here, and on the final level in this level Level, 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 yeah, and I'm, I'm kinda bad at English, you know? <laughs> I do have my iron rods, iron rebars, and there are like pairs of the constructors, so I have one constructor producing iron rods, it have, well, overflow splitter, 
and it's being split into iron rebar and the same goes for the screws and well the steel beams so there is this level and let's go for well the third level on the third level i'm producing majority of iron items for example iron plates i do produce my reinforced iron plate i do produce my modular frames and then i actually tackle some concrete over here which is well important for the next fourth level so what is happening over here bunch of constructors that are uh, produce iron plates uh, i do overclock some of them because well they will not fit there is space only for eight of them and i think i need nine or ten or something so there is that after that they are being manifolded into well reinforced iron plates and reinforced iron plates in itself they will be manifolded into well modular frames and well when the modular frames have enough reinforced iron plates they will overflow into personal storage and same goes for the modular frames which will go all the way up into the manufacturer or here with the heavy modular frames and when this is full it will overflow into the personal storage with the modular frames quite simple but well there is the logic and the steps to this blueprint also on this third level there is one neat thing over there there is the screws in the end and why is that why i'm using cast screws over here and why i'm using well the iron screws not the iron sorry uh, why i'm using the steel screws over there and the reason for that well this ratio is pretty much in line with our bolted plates over there and i just don't need such a big amount of screws in my personal storage it is way easier to handle like that uh, it is less belt work finally we have arrived to level number four and to some extent the final floor of level number three was the partial level number four because over here i was handling some concrete production with constructors and over here i have the same setup as over here on this floor uh, they are basically identical and the reason for that that i will have two lines of the limestone with the mark three belts this way it's just easier to handle it's easier logistically and also it will work with the mid game before you have mark five belts the one line of the limestone is being converted over here another line of 270 items being converted it over there and in the end they are being merged over here over here i do have smart splitter that will basically have the overflow setting for the concrete and the rest of the concrete that i need for the production it will basically go into this huge manifold over here and this manifold is being connected to the six assemblers so there is one manifold for the concrete over here down below and the one manifold for the steel pipes over there six assemblers is not enough to have everything so i do overclock two of them to various degrees of overclock so there is 150 percent over here and there is a bit less over there so the final level is very simple level it is heavy in case frame two heavy module frames per minute everything just goes here and once everything over here is overflow it will go into well storage containers all the way down below Here are a total of 12 items that are being handled in this blueprint stack. And straight over the gate you can see that uh, production ratios are all over the place. But this is like the production ratios when everything is being engaged, when everything is being produced. If you fill up your container with heavy modular frames, everything down the line, for example modular frames, reinforced iron plates, even iron plates, well everything will just go up in the production. So in real life, when you have full storage container of everything, well for example reinforced iron plates if you take some reinforced iron plates from the storage the production ratio will be not 7 it will be 15 for example all right so here is the full schematic uh, this is the approximation this is not exactly 100% what is happening in the game because well some ratios like 6.7 blah 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 there's just there is no point in doing that for example like 14 constructors i just have like 14 constructors i don't have like 13.9999 something in the game because it just doesn't make sense because everything will be just limited by your belts or by your previous production in the chain so there is that and there are two constructors for cast iron screws that will consume extra 10 copper ore and extra 10 iron ore i think you can see the pattern so over here i have intake of 270 copper ore 270 iron ore and 540 limestone which is basically two times 270 yes i do like mark free logistics and i like to just limit the things by mark free belts because well mark free belt is kind of convenient one and to some extent it even convenient when you hit mark 5 logistics because sometimes you can divide your mark 5 logistics by three and you will have 260 items which well will fit into mark free belt but in some places like for example over 
here I do use Mark IV Logistics because, well, it's just not convenient to have two Mark III belts, for example. The same goes over here for Iron Ingots. Over here, this production chain will require Mark IV belt. Then the same goes for the steel ingots over there. And the same will go for the steel pipes. But there is more pressing matter of alternative recipes. So, first of all, I do use steel canisters to produce some empty canisters. And as you know previously, I will use my empty canisters to produce some liquid biofuel in my bio waste processor. Don't need plastic to produce canisters. Well, it's just convenience, you know. Then I do have steel rods. Well, quite nice recipe because it's just so condensed. After that we have bolted iron plates. This is not the best recipe to be honest because for example stitched iron plate is way better but bolted iron plate is way more condensed. So by using this recipe I'm just using less space although I'm using a bit more materials. Same goes for the steel screws. So one steel screw constructor didn't exactly one bolted iron plate constructor. So those ratios are very convenient and it takes not a lot of space. Uh, the same goes for the steel frames. Uh, well, they are one of the most condensed recipes and well, they just do not use a lot of space. So there is that. Same goes for the heavy case frame, but to be honest, uh, it is not so important in the end because, well, the production ratio is still quite low, so I can use pretty much anything. It was just way more convenient in terms of belts and logic. With encased industrial pipe, well, I can just have more of the thing in the end, so this is just bigger production ratio over here with less amount of machinery. As usual, you can get the craft files in the comments section down below. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice one, and yeah, kiss. Out.